Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Democrats on Capitol Hill are gearing up to advance President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package, regardless of whether or not Republicans are on board. Democrats insist families and businesses in need cannot wait, but Republicans insist the aid package still goes too far. DC's Raquel Martin has more on the latest battle unraveling tonight in Washington in our top story at five. We have to act. Thursday, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said Democrats are determined to pass President Biden's massive $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill as early as next week with or without Republican support. We want it to be bipartisan always, but we can't uh, surrender. Democrats and Republicans continue mostly informal negotiations to find a plan that might gain widespread support in both the House and the Senate. But the majority of Republicans maintain they're opposed to President Biden's plan as it stands. The price tag on it is too much. Kansas Republican Senator Roger Marshall says provisions in the relief package go too far. And too much of the money is not directly going to the people who need it the most. Marshall points to the additional $1,400 stimulus checks to families, a minimum wage increase, and billions for local and state governments. You're not out of the woods by a long shot. Illinois Democratic Senator Dick Durbin says the door remains open for reasonable compromises, but says Congress needs to get moving. We shouldn't take our foot off the accelerator. At the White House, that package has the support of the majority of Americans, according to every poll that we have seen. Press Secretary Jen Psaki says the White House is still open to a bipartisan deal, but she says it will refuse to make major changes, such as splitting the package up into smaller pieces to gain Republican support. In Washington, Raquel Martin. Another group is almost eligible tonight to receive the COVID-19 vaccine right here in Siouxland. On February 1st, Woodbury County health officials will begin giving out the vaccine to people who are age 65 and older. Siouxland District Health Department Deputy Director Tyler Brock says there is currently no wait list and won't be one for a little while, but they are currently working on setting up public clinics so they will be able to give out the vaccine more efficiently and to larger groups of people. We will get people opportunities. We will make sure that they know about it. We're finalizing dates. We're finalizing locations. There's a lot of details that we are not quite ready to, to make public yet. And when we are ready for people to sign up, we will make sure that it gets announced. Brock says there are almost 16,000 people in Woodbury County that are over the age of 65. So he is asking the public to be patient and check the Siouxland District Health Department website for the very latest information. Travelers flying into the United States must now show proof of a negative COVID-19 test or proof they've already recovered from the illness. International travel test requirements, I blank, the new rules went into effect earlier this week, do require passengers on airplanes bound for the United States to get that viral test within three days prior to that flight's departure. This is according to the CDC. Now, airlines are responsible to confirm a passenger's test and if a customer does not provide the necessary documentation, it's on the airline to deny them boarding. Let's take a quick look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County Health today reporting one additional death due to the virus. There are also 22 new cases reported in 24 hours. 12 patients are still in the hospital with coronavirus symptoms. In Nebraska, Wayne County recording 922 total positives during the pandemic, as well as six deaths total. And in South Dakota, Yankton County reports 85 active cases with a weekly positivity rate of roughly 5.5%. Robinhood and other online trading platforms are moving to restrict trading on GameStop and other stocks that have soared because of fast buying by smaller investors. Yesterday, GameStop stock rocketed from below $20 earlier this month to more than $400. This coming after a voluntary army of investors on social media challenged big institutions. Among the restrictions announced by Robinhood today, investors would only be able to sell their stocks and not purchase new ones. GameStop closed the day down about 45% off yesterday's close. Volatile. A House bill endorsed by both parties at the state capitol seeks to disclose the security costs for South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem's travel. This on behalf of former President Donald Trump's campaign last year. Lawmakers from both parties have requested the information, but they say they've been refused by the governor's office. Today, during a press conference in Pierre, we asked the governor 
why she will not release the cost of her traveling security. The governor told reporters she does not discuss security issues. It's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, another chilly day here in Siouxland. And when that wind hit you today, it felt worse than it really was. That's right, Sophie. We had some breezy conditions today to go along with temperatures staying below freezing all day long here throughout Siouxland. So a chilly day for sure. And also, we've had those mostly cloudy skies as well. 26 degrees was our high temperature in Sioux City. 25 in Wayne, 23 in Yankton. 25 in Lamar's and Orange City, as well as Spencer today. 23 in Storm Lake and Carroll and 26 in Cherokee, so temperatures fairly uh, consistent all throughout Siouxland, almost the same for most of us. Forecast lows tonight, they will drop down into the teens and 20s. It is going to be a cold night ahead. It does look like those clouds will stick around tonight and then into tomorrow, we'll have cloudy skies as well. Warmer temperatures tomorrow, details on that in the 9 on 9. Sophie. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Now, voters in the Marcus Meredith Claiborne Community School District will be asked to vote again for a nearly $20 million bond referendum for the MMCRU School District. $18 million would go to fund a new elementary, give updates to the high school, parking, and also some safety improvements. Then $2.1 million will go to funding a new daycare center, which will be run by a separate board of directors, and the space will be leased from the school district. Now, the superintendent, Dan Barkle, said that he has had an overwhelming amount of support from his community to move forward with making these improvements district-wide. There's a lot of support out there for improvement of our facilities as well as a daycare on site. I think as time has gone on, now over about a year and a half later, some of these issues are really becoming acute and people are becoming more cognizant of some of the issues we're having. Yeah. Voters will hit the polls on March 2nd at the Marcus Community Center. If this bond proposal does pass, construction on the project could begin as early as the spring of 2022. For the past couple of months, we've been bringing you stories of people from all across Siouxland doing interesting and amazing things. In tonight's Siouxland Stories, we introduce you to three young men who are new to Siouxland but are already making a difference for their neighbors. We just made a Facebook ad and said, hey, if anyone needs help, we'd love to come help. It was that simple. Three missionaries new to Siouxland deciding they wanted to lend a helping hand on wintry days to those who can't afford snow removal or are not able to do it on their own. We believe that we should act like the Savior acted, um, how Jesus Christ acted, and so we try to serve as he serves, and that's why we do what we do. So we'll usually head over with our own shovels and shovel for them and we say hi if they stop out or something or and just message them afterwards. And their good deeds don't go unnoticed. It really sometimes brings them to tears and it, it really ma makes an impact on me and, and realizing that I can help other people. It's been really cool to see some people just thanking us, offering if, if they could pay us, but that, that's not necessary. We're here to, to serve and to love and uh, care for people. And while Kevin, Peter, and Bryce might be new to the area, they're not new to dealing with winter. They're from Idaho, Utah, and Washington State. I'm used to being able to shovel snow and um, kind of just clear off the driveway. That's, that's winter stuff. Which is good, because when the snow starts flying, these young men could be out shoveling for hours. One of these days, uh, like each of us got at least four houses, and, and so it was just 12, 12 houses shoveled, and yeah, just depends on whoever needs it, we, we'd love to help out. And helping out their new community doesn't end with snowy days. We go to the food bank once a week usually. Anytime anyone needs any service, we'd love to help. As we're just not allowed to use power tools because then we can get hurt, but. In the fall, they raked leaves, and in the summer, the men say they're ready to help with yard work or whatever anyone needs. And they say they get something out of it too. It's meaningful to me because I get to see how people react. They really need it. It really impacts them. Like we've even cleaned people's helped clean people's houses because they've just been too sick to be able to do it themselves. One by one, we're able to be a force for good, and we're able to lift up at least one person's life. And, you know, it's like Christ did the same thing. He helped one person at a time um, in their struggles, and we can at least do, do that the, way, the best we can as we serve one person at a time. 
Well, mask wearing has become a part of our everyday lives, but some have wondered if it might be better to wear two of them. A new study looking at the issue saying it might not be a bad idea to double it up. We'll explain why coming up. And the clouds, they look like they're going to hang around for the next few days. Seasonal temperatures tomorrow and then a wintry mix on Saturday. I'll have all the details on that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Throughout the next few days, and then very cold to end next week in the teens for highs. I think what's most interesting about these next few systems is that uh, we're teetering right above freezing, yeah. and so it could be that nasty rain snow mix you're talking about. Yeah, it'll start out as that. I think it will switch to snow, though, as temperatures cool down. Hmm. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Well, rabies is, of course, a fatal disease that affects animals' neurological systems. That includes the brain and their nervous system. The disease can be prevented in your pets by getting a rabies vaccine, of course, for animals over the age of six months. One local veterinarian says every year rabies is seen in domestic animals in Iowa and this vaccine helps pets fight it off. If you'd like, you can find the full story on our website right now. That's SiouxLandProud.com or our free mobile news app. A family on a quest to find a painting is turning to the Internet for help now. We'll explain what's so special about the painting and that it was accidentally sold more than a decade ago at a garage sale. That story's coming up, but first... Some have asked whether or not wearing two masks at the same time is better than one. We share a new study with you that says it might not be a bad idea. Coming up in three minutes. Mask wearing has become a part of our everyday lives now, and some people are asking if wearing two masks may provide some additional protection. Experts say there might be some benefit to adding that extra layer. Reporter Matt Wright has our details. By now, most of us know wearing a mask helps prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's better for you and it's better for other people. It's better for you because you're not getting it from somebody. And it's better for other people because you don't have to worry about whether they're going to get it from you or not. But is wearing two masks better than one? Is it a good idea for people to double up on masks? Looking at the science, it makes sense. Dr. Claudia Hoyen, co-director of infection control for University Hospital, says it may offer additional protection, especially with cloth masks. Effectiveness depends on the material's filtration and how tightly the mask fits to the skin. If you have a mask that isn't completely fitted and it's not a medical grade mask and you put another mask over, you're probably going to get a better fit as well as you will get more filtration. A July study found wearing two masks may increase protection from virus particles by more than 50%. Hoyan says more data is needed, and there's been no formal recommendation from health agencies. The times when we're seeing transmission of COVID between people is when everybody is not masked. Hoyan says N95 and surgical masks offer the most protection. Look for tightly woven material and multiple layers in cloth masks and gaiters. How long will masking be with us? How long can people expect to have to wear masks as standard protocol? Well, I would assume we will be masking at least through the fall um, and potentially through 2021. As masks and social distancing still remain crucial to slowing the spread of the virus. I'm good on my end, you know, as long as you just stay prayed up, you know, you cool. How far would you go to find a missing family heirloom? Well, a man in Indiana is asking the internet for help on his hunt for a family painting mistakenly sold at a garage sale more than a decade ago. We'll explain why it's so special coming up. An Indiana man is searching for a lost family relic. The painting was sold about 10 years ago to a stranger. Now he's hoping to bring it home. Mike Sullivan shares the story. How do you measure hope? It's about like 36 by, by 48. Packed inside a frame, potentially lost forever. Of course, I'm also completely prepared to accept that I, I may never see it again. What Mercer Suppiger is talking about is this. It must have been painted sometime in the 50s or 60s. His grandfather, Neil, captured in one-of-a-kind art. First thing that will jump out to anybody has, has got to be the fish. It's quirky. It's odd. My dad tells me that it's like a parody of some other painting. It fits their neighborhood perfectly, just not in Mercer's home yet. Someone in Irvington has got the right kind of personality who would have this in their house. You see. Around 2010, 2012. His family had a yard sale. They just were just trying to get rid of stuff and... Somebody saw it at our garage sale, thought it was cool, and 
and they sold it. Right outside their home on East St. Clair Street. But my parents still live in the same house. Inside it, you'll find other works by the same artist. I just love looking at this thing. Art White was an artist for Eli Lilly and an expert calligrapher. Yeah. Very like Holy Grail. And all of it's like written in that old English. He designed packaging for the company. The artist might have just flipped over some unprinted package and painted this on the other side. All that remains now is this photograph of it. I just desperately need it in my life. I really want it back. Seeing as his grandfather came down with Alzheimer's. I would love to remember him more in this way. It's the way he hopes his children and grandchildren will too. I am offering a $100 bill, cash. A reward to the person who can bring the painting home. To anyone else, it's just some portrait of a random person with thick framed glasses. But to Mercer. And a fish. It's family. Taking a live look outside right now, Marcus returns with one more check on our forecast. Stay with us. Finally tonight, a Chick-fil-A manager in South Carolina has a particular set of skills and he knows how to use them. <laughs> we had to say it. Jerry Walkowak has gone viral after a video surfaced of him helping direct traffic at a drive through vaccine clinic. The manager says he saw a hiccup in the way the line was being handled <laughs> and had to spring into action. Within minutes, hours-long waits were cut in half. The town says the event went so well, they're planning on bringing Jerry from Chick-fil-A back for future drive through clinics. Now, Marcus, I know you can attest to this. Our Chick-fil-A uh, here in Sioux City always has a line, yeah. and they always have people directing traffic and like you're at an airport. Yeah, and they know how to get through it really fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can go through <laughs> people that just, it's crazy what they can do. It's so efficient. That, that's funny that it translates to other lines, but it is gonna be a cold <laughs> night tonight if you are out and about. Tomorrow, we are going to see temperatures a little bit warmer than today, but still cloudy. Good news. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks for joining us. We'll both see you back here at six. Good night.